Hi there, Adnan here from Polygon Flow. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to leverage Ecotope, a word building tool that allows you to quickly add details to your environment in no time. Our focus will be on creating this environment and rendering it with Arnold. If you're new to the words Polygon Flow or Graphen, I'd like to give you a quick rundown of what we do. Polygon Flow is a 3D software company that aims to make it easier for artists and technical artists to create tools and also make it easier to use, share, manage or sell those tools between artists. We're solving the tools creation problem with Graphen, a visual coding software that uses nodes to help you create tools. Graphen is deeply embedded with Autodesk Maya and Unreal Engine which means you can use it to create scattering tools, but also PBR material creation tools, FBX exporters, a calculator, cables, and so much more. Once you've done your tool, you can export it to the Graphen library, a plugin that sits right into Unreal Engine and Autodesk Maya, and gives you access to tools without having to touch a single node or a line of code. You could, for example, make a really kick-ass tool and sell it on Gumroad, or just share it with your Discord community. You can try Graphen completely for free. Just head over to polygonflow.io and hit download. With that said, let's get started. Before we go to the word building part, I just wanted to quickly cover my render settings and light settings as well. To get started, let's look at the render settings. While working on the project, I wanted to have some quick way of previewing my changes at runtime and I just set the resolution to 1K by 1K. I was fortunate enough to find a 3090 RTX card pretty recently and thanks to that I've made sure that my render device is set to GPU and the default render fallback to CPU. This one is super useful as I'm using the Nvidia Optics Denoiser which unfortunately causes some crashes here and there, but nothing crazy for any normal Maya user. So I'm just gonna collapse this menu here. Again, this is the resolution that I'm using. I didn't tweak any other setting really, but for the final render, I did set the resolution to 6K, and when I rendered it, I then downscaled it to 4K for the final image. This gave me some extra crispness in the render without having to apply some filters like sharpness in Photoshop, for example. So I'm just going to close this and I'll remove the filter here. And the only lighting setup that I had is an AI sky dome. And if we go to the attribute editor, you'll see that the intensity was set to 2.5. I slightly tweaked the exposure to get the value that I wanted and disabled normalize. With that said, let's jump right into it. So I have my scene here, there's no scattered object yet, and as you can see things are still really rough. The lighting itself is actually final, but we still have a lot of shadows that we want to play along these objects. We still need to scatter things to hide basic imperfections like this, because we're too lazy to soft select the edges and just push them down a bit. And for now I'm just going to make sure that it's paused, and then I'll minimize the window. With that done, I'll go to the Polygon Flow menu and then open Graphen Library. Here, I'm just going to select the Ecotope Scatter tool. And as you can see, we have a lot of parameters here, but the only thing we want to focus on initially is the base settings. So I'm just going to shift click on the base settings and that'll collapse all previously opened groups and only focus on the current group. So with that open, I want to make sure that I select my ground and add it as my scatter surface. And then I'm gonna select these plants and add them as the scatter objects. As soon as that's done, you'll see that our ground is now filled with our plants. This is because the current execution mode is set to runtime, but if it was set to default, we would have had to click play in order for that to happen. Similarly, moving the slider in runtime mode automatically updates the scene but if you are using the default mode, it would require you to move the slider, then hit the play button to actually see the update. You also have the third mode, or middle mode, of mouse release button, which allows you to run the operation only when you release your mouse. These can be really useful when you have a tool that is extremely performance heavy, like an FBX exporter for example, where you don't necessarily want to export an FBX whenever you move a slider, but you'd rather do it on the click of the play button here. So with this scatter done, I want to select my curve 
and it's right here hidden under all these objects and then I'll go to the path mask in mode and I'll make sure that I add the curve right here. Now we have a basic path and I'm just going to play with the width slider to show you what that looks like. You know, in principle it looks fairly basic. But we have a couple of plans under our rock, so I'll just select the rocks, expand the volume masking group and make sure that I also have the rocks under the volume masking option. Back to our width parameter, I'm just going to play with it slightly, but as you can see the scattering itself is really uniform. And this becomes even more obvious if you have higher density, where it's essentially a straight path. So I'll just lower the density back a little bit. And then back to my group, I'm going to lower this value here and expand the dithering settings. Now, if I enable the dithering settings, you'll see that we have a few parameters that allow us to create some breakups. I'm just going to play with the frequency, which is essentially a noise frequency and then the density, which allows us to control the mask along the edges. Now we have a bunch of stray plants here, or this really small group right here, and these kind of breakups are really important. And I feel like this feature set is still not perfect, so we're probably going to keep improving it until it gets to a point where you just have one slider and it creates some really good looking breakups instead of relying on just noise, for example. So for now, I'm just going to select another noise type and I'll keep tweaking this value until I find something I'm happy with. All right, now that I have this value, I'll just move back my width a little bit more and this should do it for this first layer. The next step would be to scatter the smaller pebbles over here and to do that, I'll just select them there. I'll go to my menu and click on create new instance. Now, before we do that, let me just quickly talk about the concept of instances in uh, Graphon. So, in this UI, we're currently running Ecotope Scatter Instance 1. And we have an up and down button here to allow you to cycle through multiple instances of the same kind of Ecotope tool. But currently, we only have one instance which controls this grass and has all these settings. And so, clicking on these buttons does nothing. But if I go here, and click on new instance and then I just set up my basic objects here you'll see that now we have the objects and they're two completely independent tools that we can control individually so I can just click this button right here and that'll bring me back to my initial scatter which was the plants and I can obviously just click up and that'll bring me back to the rocks right here so I'll just lower the density and then collapse this group but as you can see, we have a lot of them. And this is where the max instance count comes in really handy. This parameter allows you to hard code how many objects you actually want to have, or rather, what's the maximum object count you want to have. In this case, I think 5,000 should be enough. And that doesn't mean we're going to have 5,000 objects here. Again, it just means the maximum could be 5,000. So I'll just collapse that and I'll lower the density again. And then I'll go to the noise masking over here. And if I enable that, we'll see a couple of chunks of our rocks just being removed. And this is thanks to the same principle of noise that we saw earlier in the dithering settings, where we have something like the frequency, for example. And I'm just going to play with this value a little bit. And then we can control the min and max clamp, which allows us to decide what are the smallest or the biggest rocks that we want to remove. I'm just going to leave this value as is, but if you're really worried about performance, which you shouldn't be if this is just an offline scene, but obviously we have a couple of rocks scattered here, and maybe you want to keep them, you know, in case they are visible, and in here they actually are, but if you wanted to remove them, you could actually select the curve, go to path masking and add the curve. The curve would currently mask the rocks that are on the path, but what you want to do is disable the reverse parameter and that'll only show the rocks that are actually on the path itself. And now you don't have any rocks under your plants. The next object that we're going to be covering is going to be these rocks right here. In the final render, you can see that we have a couple of twigs and stones scattered on top of these rocks. To do that, I'll just go to the menu and create a new instance. I'll expand this group here and then add my base scatter surface right here 
and then I'm going to select the twigs oh, on sec. They are right here and also select these rocks over here. Now I'm just going to add them here. Now there is a lot of twigs in that set of objects. So the process could take a couple of seconds before you see it actually in the viewport. Now we have the twigs and I'm just going to increase the scatter density to have a few more. And some of them are really big. So I'll expand the gradient settings parameter. And if I play with the gradient value here, it allows me to have varying sizes that are based on a parameter like proximity or a curve, for example. Obviously, we don't have a curve that is masking them here. So I could just tweak the noise min and noise max instead. This allows me to control the size of my instances. So I'll just have a value like that. And if I go back to the density, it's already to the maximum. So next, what I can do is go back to advanced settings and maybe say 50,000 will be the maximum number of instances that I want. Now, of course, we have these twigs and rocks scattered all over the place, and we only want them to be at the top facing section of our geometry. To create that mask, I'm going to expand the directional masking and enable mask by angle. This basically does the job and we don't need to do anything else. But if you're tempted, you can always play with this slider just to have a few more objects here, for example. So now we have our objects scattered right here and also on this rock and the smaller ones over here. Lastly, I wanted to quickly cover the grass scattering part on this grave. So I'll just create a fourth instance and I'll expand the base settings group and then add it as my scatter surface. And then I'll go back here and I'll select these plants and I'll add them as these scatter objects. Now we have all these plants all over the place. And just like before, we expand directional masking and enable that. And that'll ensure that we don't have plants all over the place. So I'll just tweak this value to get just a couple of them. Uh, maybe increase the density and then play with the noise masking to make sure that it's not so uniform. I'll increase the frequency to have smaller breakups. Remember, if the frequency is lower, you're going to have larger breakups. So let's just play with this until we have something like that, for example. Now that we've scattered these plants, we can just quickly check what our render looks like. I'm just going to zoom out and go to render, update full scene. Now there's a known bug that we currently have. I think it's either with our instancer or the IPR render mode. And the bug essentially doesn't update every change you make between the IPR render and what you have in the scene. So oftentimes, let's say you add a new instance and some geometry in the scene, you'll have to go to render and update full scene. So this is what the basic scene looks like. And I'm not going to go through every single scatter layer, but as you can see, the principle is roughly the same. You select the surface you want to scatter and you select the objects you want to scatter you add them in here, and then you start tweaking the parameters as you see fit. So I'm just going to enable runtime here, and I want to make sure that my rocks, for example, are smaller. And so to do that, I'll just scroll down uh, maybe twice, and then I'll go to the gradient scale and just start playing with the gradient mask, for example, to make sure that the rocks are smaller. And this will automatically be visible in our render as well. The final project was essentially doing the same thing, but with another five layers where we just scatter another layer on top of another layer and so on until we had every single detail in the scene. One thing that I would have loved to add to this render was some plastic bags and some other kind of human made trash. And we would have just put it in this section to indicate that they had washed the shore. And this would give you a few more indication again about the era in which this is happening beyond just a bottle over here. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this quick breakdown of how environments can be made really quickly with Ecotope. And let's catch up soon.